Mountain biking is a great sport. It's a lot of fun. But you know what makes it even more fun? An electric motor. I'm Alex Grieve, and welcome to Higher Voltage. Okay, so the first thing you have to do is obviously remove your rear wheel. To do it, you'll have to disconnect your brakes. Linear pull brakes are pretty easy to remove. Simply squeeze the brakes together and then remove the dropout and out they come. Next, we'll remove the rear wheel by pulling the quick release, loosening the axle, and then what I like to do is push down on the derailleur to allow the wheel to come right out and free. To remove the gears, you're going to need a cassette removal tool like this, and it just fits inside of the gears like that. Now, typically you hold the gears in place with a chain whip. However, not owning a chain whip, I find an impact gun works just fine. And I'm just gonna hold the gears with this rag so I don't tear my hands up in the process. So, with a firm grip, let's get this thing off here. And off comes my cassette. Getting the cassette on the new hub can be tricky. Spin it around until you find a section where it seems like the teeth are oddly wide. You'll see a section in the gears where the teeth there are also fairly wide and that's going to fit this wide slot. So go ahead and fit that in place. And then of course follow up with any additional gears that you have to put into the system. And then just go ahead and secure your cassette just as you removed it. This time I don't recommend the use of an impact gun. I just recommend using a wrench. And the reason for that is you don't want to over tighten it and an impact gun can definitely damage things. Okay. I think we're locked in. Before we install it on the bike, we're gonna to have to install our inner nut. And I'm just going to screw it all the way down until it stops. I'll figure out where to adjust it once this goes on the bicycle. Okay, so now we've got to mount our tire onto the new motor, which means dismounting it from our old wheel first. So the first thing you're going to have to do is get the air out of the tire to make it easy to remove. And then most bicycle shops will sell a tire removal tool like this. So what you'll do is you'll just dig this edge into the rim of the tire and pull out. And then assuming your tire isn't really stiff, you can simply run along the edge like this. I don't recommend the use of metal tools as this can damage your inner tube inside and it can also damage your rim. But if you're careful, you can use this and this will slide along a lot easier uh, than your tire tool will. But just go ahead and put it in there at an angle and then just drag it backwards. And of course, because I'm trying to demonstrate this, this is a real pain in the butt. Usually this is quite easy. Don't try to get both sides off at once. Just get one side off and free it up. Then dig your tire tool on the other side and do the same thing. Just move it around. And off we go. Now before installing this on the motor, make sure there's a little bit of air in the tube and this will keep you from getting a pinch flat when you try to install it on your new wheel. Also pay attention to the rotation direction. It'll be marked on the tire because you don't want the tire to rotate the opposite direction otherwise it won't get proper grip on the trail. All right, to mount a bicycle tire, again, just do one side at a time. Don't try to run both sides onto the rim at once because, well, that's quite difficult. And this is gonna fight you. Now, you don't necessarily need a tool to do this. Sometimes you can simply roll the tire backwards and beat it up. But sometimes they fit a little bit tight and they'll get stuck. Like this one apparently is one of the ones that's gonna get stuck. And so, coming right back to our tool, and just pry it right up. And moving on over. And once you get one side, do the other side.
All right, we're ready to go. Okay. Okay, one thing you need to note are these little spacers with a tab. These tabs face downward and fit in the dropout, and they make sure the axle doesn't spin when the wheel is been, being driven by the electric motor. Now, you'll want to be sure that your wires come out the front side of your motor. So, I'm going to drop those in here, like so. And you want to be sure your tabs are facing the same direction. So we'll do that here. Let's go ahead and load this back into the bicycle. Actually, these don't seem too bad, but the brakes are a little bit skewed to the side. So I'm going to tighten up this tension spring a little bit to bring the brakes back here to center. Now that looks about right. Okay, the next thing we have to do is set the range on the derailleur. These two screws determine how far up and down the chain can go. So rather than shift with the cable, I'm just going to push this by hand. Now I can't get it to go up all the way onto the top ring, so I'm going to have to loosen my set screw here and see if I can get it to go. The other thing I have to do is make sure it doesn't come down below that last tooth, so I'm going to put the bike in the lowest gear. Ah, and it wants to come off. That's no good. So we're gonna have to draw that one back. All right, now we'll set the high range. Just push up on the derailleur. Well, that's not gonna work. Okay, so now we've got to get the shifter cables adjusted again. So I'm just going to go up two gears here in the derailleur. It's not shifting very smoothly, so I'm going to have to make a couple adjustments. Let's see if that fixes it. Okay, since I opted for the regenerative braking option, I'm going to have to change out my levers for this. And the nice thing is I also got the thumb throttle, so I'm going to have to move all of my controls inward so I can make room for this. It's going to make shifting a little bit odd, I think, but then again, it's probably worth it to have the electric motor. So let's go ahead and pull off our controls. Okay, so it looks like I ran into a little problem. My rapid failure shifter, yes, I'm calling it rapid failure, comes a grip shift guy. It keeps bumping into my throttle, so I'm gonna have to finagle them a little bit, which means I'm gonna have to put my throttle on first. So that might make the throttle a little bit harder to get to, but then again, I do want this to be a bicycle, so I'm gonna need to have access to this shifter, unless I wanna go grip shift. So, that's gonna put it a little bit further away, but for the most part, nah, I'll deal with it.
so in addition to my thumb throttle, I also wanted a pedal assist for my bicycle. And that is this magnetic disc and this sensor here. These get mounted behind the crank and to get it off, you're gonna need a crank puller. Looks like this. The way a crank puller works is after you pull the bolt off here, you thread it into the pedal and there are threads in there that allow it to get going until uh, it mates with the shaft. And then once it starts mating with the shaft, screw this out like so, and you'll feel it engage and then just start cranking. Ah. And this is fused on there with 20 years of corrosion, so yeah. All right, now that we've got the crank off, we also have to pull the bottom bracket off to mount this sensor. Now, there are tools to remove a bottom bracket. However, I find a pipe wrench works just fine. So if you don't have a bottom bracket tool, a pipe wrench works great. Now, if you remove the crank on the pedal side, you need to know the bottom bracket threads are reversed, not forward, and that keeps the bottom bracket from loosening itself when you're pedaling. So it feels a little weird because you think you're tightening it, but in fact you're not. So just grab it around the outside and give it a solid turn with a pipe wrench. and out your bottom bracket will come. Then, place your sensor in there, magnet sensor side out. And tighten your bottom bracket back down over top. So before we install the crank, we have to install this magnetic pickup. You'll notice there are arrows around the outside and that's the direction that the pedals move. And it's pretty easy to install. You just slap it on there and then go ahead and thread your chain back through. And go ahead and reinstall your crank. So the wire that came with my pedal assist system is obviously way longer than it needs to be. And since I'm going to have to cut and solder anyway, I'm not gonna use this connector, but instead I'm going to use a common servo connector. Uh, this will make uh, connecting and disconnecting very easy. And these are fairly cheap. You can find them on eBay, uh, Hobby King, lots of different places. Uh, just a quick disconnect. Uh, the wires over here, red is power black that's partially open there is ground and this blue one is reverse and I'm not quite sure why you need that on a bicycle interesting they have it but uh, it doesn't look like it's gonna be needed and then yellow is pedal assist but it's a little bit confusing here because we have uh, a blue a yellow and a red so the red is the only one that's power the yellow would be our ground and our blue would actually be connected to the yellow so uh, at least according to this and uh, looking at the wiring schematic it looks like that is indeed right so um, first thing I'm gonna have to do is come in here and figure out just about how much I'm gonna need so you know we'll make up the rest of that with a servo lead so let's cut this off here and be very careful about stripping this off If you're not comfortable with a soldering iron, that's fine. You can use quick disconnects, butt splice connectors, even wire nuts will work here. Just keep them out of the way of the pedal. Now, I only changed my connector because, well, I didn't want to carry around extra wiring. This thing has an excessive amount of wiring already, so I wanted to keep this as small as possible. The rest of the bicycle is, well, plug and play. It's pretty straightforward and even comes pre-wired. Now, granted, you're going to have to disconnect those wires, but... Yeah, it's pretty well self-explanatory. This is just the mechanical installation. The bike, well, it's pretty fast. Actually, it goes about 35 miles an hour. This here is in kilometers per hour, but you can see I'm making a pretty good pace. Now, expect 
to need a fairly large battery for this. I recommend a minimum of 400 watt hours. If you want to know what I thought of this kit, you could see my review in another video on this channel. I'm Alex Grieve, and thanks for watching Higher Voltage.